We were talking just a moment ago, Peter, before we got we started mm -hmm. the interview, and um, you know, UK um, in the 2010 SDSR talked about closing excess uh, base capacity. Um, there's yes. always a concern there when it comes to you know displaced families, jobs that are lost in the United States, that's a big thing. The community may have had an X amount of jobs, but may only get a third back ultimately in that mm -hmm. repurposing, and then folks worry about the money loss. But from your standpoint, uh, and, and Michael Fallon is proud that he's already started the process on so many bases, especially in November, he made a mm -hmm. big announcement that didn't get as much attention uh, as perhaps it should. But you actually see gold in that, don't you? You see yes, a real absolutely. silver lining. Well, every, op every change has an opportunity associated with it. So as an example, the closure of a base will require key pieces of equipment to be transferred elsewhere in the world. And one of the opportunities for our company is to provide the transportation rigs, jigs, fixtures, etc., and deal with the whole of the uh, dismantling of the current structures and so on before they're uh, moved to wherever else is required. So, yes, there's always an opportunity. Uh, and let me ask you guys one last question. I mean, you guys are an engineering company and in a very competitive space. Um, there are a lot of very big guys who do some of this work. You guys are working to go up that value stream. Um, talk to us about the access to engineering talent. That's a question that all the, is, is asked in the UK all the time. Is the government investing enough in basic research and technology? Um, Two-part question. First, is there that kind of investment in research and technology that's going to supply you with the quality of engineers you need for you to maintain your competitive edge? It's improving. I think some of the investments in uh, the uh, MCT and those sort of organizations uh, is giving a better image of research and development, and that encourages uh, youngsters to join this sort of engineering fraternity at a younger age and so on. Because that was what was, has been lacking, really. Uh, encouraging uh, either through the education system or through popular expectations and so on, encouraging them into engineering type courses or mathematics courses and so on, the more key techniques and technologies that are required by ourselves. Whatever happens, we're still going to have a, a shortage of skills and certainly part of this, this group's uh, solution to that problem is using good skills from outside the UK. So. We have just established an engineering base in India, for example, right. to the complement, not to replace, but to complement and to give us the opportunity for faster growth in that area. And India producing a, a giant number of engineers on an annual yes, basis. Indeed. Tony, I mean, how do you see uh, the picture from your standpoint in the business? Well, the, the group as a whole, we invest a lot in our people that, that we currently got across all ages as well. We've got people going through adult education programs and also we, we do a lot of training with our, with our younger people. Um, we have on um, Greenbelt Lean Manufacturing, we, we, can't, we have 10 to 12 people a year going through that process across the whole group. We also have um, tomorrow, for example, no, sorry, Friday for example, we've got the stand is being manned by our apprentices. So we've got eight apprentices coming from across the company um, to man the stand, to talk to other young people, to try and encourage them into what we do in engineering. And let me ask you one last question about, about budgetary uncertainty in the UK. Mm. Um, uh, Sir Michael Fallon, the Secretary of State for Defense, is, is very uh, bullish uh, and, and um, you know, about the ambitious program the government is on to increase defense spending, and yet there is talk about a black hole, uh, and you know, folks use the number uh, 30 billion, which Sir Michael challenges fundamentally mm -hmm. that premise, uh, and, and, is, and still remains optimistic, even though the cabinet office is looking at, at trade-offs and cuts. Um, uh, how, how is that, is that affecting your business at all, uh, and how you approach planning and thinking about the future? I think it affects every business in this, this sort of sector. I think you have to take a global view, taking a single country and so on. You're obviously subject to the vagaries of government and political choices and so on. Um, I think the UK is doing the right thing in terms of the way it's trying to position itself. And I think we will make the right decisions in terms of cuts and, and investments. Uh, but this company is not about just the UK, you know, the US economy, Asian economies and so on, and their investments in their defence forces and so on are clearly opportunities for us. And are you worried about Brexit at all and the potential impacts it could have on your business? Uh, yes, I think we are. Um, the, it depends how it's implemented. 
depends on whether it affects uh, immigration and engine uh, freedom of movement for engineers, for example. And it's important that uh, regulatory standards are dealt with properly as well. And it's difficult to see how some of those things are dealt with easily and properly. Tony, anything to add on that? No, no, I agree. I think the Brexit is it's the level of uncertainty. I think whether we were in or out in the end, I don't think uh, it's going to make much change. But it's the level of uncertainty in going through the process that's going to, going to be the, the uh, interesting bit. Tony, thanks very much. Peter, it's always great talking to you as well. Best of luck to you guys, and we look forward to you guys having bigger, bigger, bigger stands and bigger, bigger headlines. Sir, Thank thanks you. very much.